Okay. Hi. Hello to everybody. We can start with the 22nd AF conference. Welcome in Salerno and welcome here. Okay. Uh, I'm, I think that you, most of you know me. <laughs> My name is Loretta Malvarosa. I'm uh, from Nicea. I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Nicea. Uh, that is co-organizing this uh, conference uh, in collaboration with the University of Salerno. I, won't, I don't want uh, to speak for a long time. I want just to give you some technical details. Then I will uh, leave the microphone to uh, most important speakers. <laughs> and uh, so as you can see on the slide, there are some technical details for the, for the conference. Uh, so the plenary session will be here in the Salone Genovesi at the first floor. Due to the high number of participants, the plenary session can be followed also from the auditorium at the second floor and from Salagatto at the third floor uh, that are video and audio uh, connected with this room. And uh, you know that uh, the plenary session will be live streaming as uh, uh, already circulated during, uh, uh, by mail. The parallel session uh, will be at the auditorium, second floor and Salagatto, and the maps of the buildings is in your bag. Uh, for presenter, please provide your presentation in PPT uh, before the start of the session uh, where you have been assigned. You can refer to the chair assigned uh, to your session, look at the program for this, and uh, each chair will be assisted by one of the local organizers, fr people from NISEA, uh, for coll collecting presentation. Uh, we have three posters, and posters are positioned at the ground floor, uh, one of the small room of uh, uh, in one of the small rooms uh, of the Galleria del Gusto, so uh, when you at, uh, enter on the right. And uh, poster authors, uh, uh, should, could, if possible, should be present during the morning coffee breaks to provide information on the poster. Coffee breaks and lunches uh, will be uh, at the ground floor. They will be served in Salone del Follaro, uh, close to the reception, and uh, possible, possibly be consumed also in the Galleria del Gusto uh, rooms on the opposite side. Uh, other details on conference events, so guided tours, social dinner and transfer, uh, are on a paper sheet in your bag. So all the details are there. Enjoy the conference. I want to leave uh, the microphone to Gianluigi Coppola, that uh, was, uh, uh, for, for us was very important in organizing this conference. And uh, he wants to uh, say some words to you before uh, introducing Professor Amendola. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Welcome to Salerno. So, I want to say two things. First of all, the first that is more important is thank, thanks, thanks to all of you who came here in Salerno. It's so beautiful to see the same people that come from home part of Europe, from home part of world from from United States. Thanks, Professor Costello. And it's always beautiful to see in the same room people from different nations of Europe, from Europe, from the wonderful Norway to the lovely place. The second thing that I want to say is that in this room, there is also the first who teach economics in Europe. It's not me, but <laughs> it is Antonio Genovese, who was the first teacher of economics of the Europe and I think of the world. Thanks again, and I good to the professor. And then this amendment, the name of faculty of economics. Hello, welcome to everybody. First of all, I apologize. I will read some words, not to be too long, uh, because we are in front of Antonio Genovesi. He was the founder, the first teacher of economics in the world before Adam Smith. I will uh, start from a joke that Lord Arendorf 
while uh, Ivo was dean at the London School of Economics and uh, Political Sciences, used to say, used to say that uh, the dean commitments of the guest academic institution in occasion of a conference are only three. The first one is to guarantee good weather and sun shining <laughs> for a good staying of the participant. Uh, actually, I, I failed totally <laughs> in this first, this first uh, commitment. It, but was a very hard job to make Salerno looking like a city by the Northern Sea. <laughs> and that was to make some of us feeling at home. <laughs> That's my joking. The second uh, the commitment is to welcome participants and academic guests and to thank members of the scientific committee and the organizers. As regards the second point, not joking, I would like to welcome and thank also in behalf of the Magnifico Rettore of the University of, the University of Salerno, Aurelio Tomasetti, who wouldn't, could be here oh, um, today, uh, all the participants of the conference, with special attention to senior and young researchers coming from abroad. A special welcome to the President of the European Association of Fisheries Economists, Azar Curtis, and to the past President, Phil Rogers and Massimo Spagnolo, my best friend. Uh, a welcome and thanks to be here to the invited keynote speakers, Christopher Costello, Audum Lem, and Ernesto Peña Slado. But a special thanks, I think, we have to, all, all of us, have to do to the scientific committee and the local organizer of the conference. Uh, first of all, to my colleague and my very friend Gianluigi Coppola, that I said before, and the researcher of the Nicea Research Cooperative that organized the, the, the all of us, all the researchers. Uh, the conference, as we, uh, as we know, was organized by the um, Department of Economics and Statistics of the University of Salerno and by the Nicea Fisheries and Aquaculture Economic Research uh, Cooperative that is in Salerno. And I am particularly glad that the conference of the European Association of um, Fisheries will be held in Salerno because uh, uh, of a very consolidated tradition research activity in the field of environment and fisheries economics at the University of Salerno, whose founder was Massimo Spagnolo in the, in the 80s, I think, or before the 80s, in the 80s, that founded also the IREPA, the Institute of Research of uh, Economics of Fisheries, and this tradition still uh, is in de developing the department thanks to the collaboration between DSS, the Department of Economic and Statistics, and ISEA. Just last word to say, uh, to <coughs> tell you that we are very close to a very handsome building where the idea of the university was born in the uh, ninth century. was born when three medicines, Christian, uh, Greek, and Arab, met and decided to found the Scuola Medica Salernitana. La the idea was to uh, put together the knowledge, the research activity, uh, be belonging to three different cultures. And this was the, ori the origin of the first idea of the university before the Alma Laurea di Bologna. And the, 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 the development of the Scuola Medica Salernitana, uh, which is the, come dire, the ancient predecessor of the University of Salerno. I invite all of you to go to the Tempio di Pomona and to the close uh, church 
there is a cathedral of Salerno where the, where the studies, the study, where the thousand years ago there was the first university. Thank you. Okay. Now uh, it's time for Ezel to, <coughs> to give uh, the welcome to, to the audience. So thank you, Ezel. Thank you, Loretta. Um, so, um, since Adam Smith was apparently the second economist in the world, and I come from Edinburgh, perhaps it's only appropriate that I've spoken second after Professor Amendola. Um, so, good morning, everybody. Um, I'd like to add my welcome to our 2015 conference, the 22nd EFI conference here in Salerno. We're very grateful to our friends at Nicia and the University of Salerno for organizing a conference and hosting us this year. We enjoyed a, a marvelous reception at the um, gardens last night where we had the uh, education about the, uh, the origins of the university and enjoyed all the herbs and some local um, medicinal drinks that were most welcome. So we found that the Italian hospitality was very much warmer than the weather. <coughs> <laughs> uh, very generous and warm, so that was a lovely reception last night. So on behalf of all of us in the association, I'd like to extend our thanks to those who've done all the work to pull this um, conference together. And I'd also like to thank uh, Mr. Uh, now let's see if I can get this right, Rigilo, the uh, General Director for Fisheries at the Italian Ministry who've um, added their patronage to our conference, so that's very good. I think it's good to hold our conference in different regions around Europe to help bring to mind that there are very um, substantial differences that exist within our fishing and seafood industries within the, the different parts of Europe. We're all aware that there's a great breadth of culture and expectations across Europe and that extends to the fishing industry. So we experience that in fisheries management and fisheries trade and so on. Even within the European Union common fisheries policy, we know that each member state has authority over how they implement the policy in their waters and how they allocate the fishing opportunities amongst businesses in their own countries. But now, for instance, in the reformed CFP, there is mention of how member states should allocate or are obliged to allocate the fishing rights amongst their own fishing fleets. And already we're hearing some people talking about the fact that in some member states, they feel that the allocation of fishing rights doesn't match what is written in the new CFP about the things that member states are supposed to take into account. So, that's something that's a brewing topic, although it's the authority of the member to say to decide. The CFP now specifies, well, you've got to take account of this, that, and the other when you allocate the rights. So obviously some people are saying, yeah, it's not done properly in our member state. So there's a big variation even within the EU. And of course, our association extends beyond the boundaries of the EU, and we include our uh, very northern friends who are not members of the EU, um, but clearly because the bulk of our industry and experience is within the EU, the common fisheries policy means a lot to most of us. And those who aren't in the EU have to work with the rest of us who are. So the common fisheries policy is key to a lot of the research that we do and obviously to the management. It's important then as researchers and advisors to policymakers and business owners that we try to educate ourselves about this breadth of culture and breadth of expectation across the EU and across Europe. So on that note, I would also like to add my welcome to our keynote speakers, some of whom have traveled from uh, quite far away. So we've got Professor Chris Costello, who we'll hear from later today. And we've got Dr. Audem Lem from the United Nations and Ernesto Peñas from DG Mare is going to speak to us later in the week. This conference has got the largest number of delegates registered for any EFI conference, so big congratulations to Nisia for the um, great effort there on the marketing, to the extent that we even had to 
move to a new venue because we were more successful than anticipated. So I'm really delighted to see how healthy and relevant EFI is, um, especially as we take this opportunity to celebrate 25 years of our association. Our membership numbers are high. The attendance at recent events has been high. So that shows that people, um, our members, policymakers, industry representatives seem to find the content valuable, the networking opportunity valuable. And as long as people want to come to the events, we'll keep going as an association. Um, I hope that our members continue to find it useful and relevant, um, keep you up to date with research, industry issues, uh, policy considerations facing the seafood sector throughout Europe and the, the rest of the world. And I hope that the sharing of knowledge, ideas, and especially enthusiasm amongst our members and conference delegates will um, help to inspire new and relevant research and discussions amongst industry groups and policymakers. Um, I'm really happy, in fact, to be handing up over the presidency of IAFI this year. So I've been 10 years in the Bureau, and I'm happy because I know that the association is thriving. Um, I'm confident that those who are going to steer IFI through the, the next years will continue to ensure that the activities of our association uh, remain relevant and take account of the needs of policymakers and other researchers and business owners throughout Europe. So I'm handing over the presidency not just because um, I'm bored with it now, but our rules mean that you can only serve for two periods of office in any one slot in the Bureau. So if you'll excuse me a little administration note here, on Wednesday this week after lunch, we'll ask the non-members of EFI to excuse us for an hour while we hold our general meeting, our biennial general meeting now. So we'll elect new officers to the Bureau of IAFI at that meeting. Um, it's a, IFI remains a very friendly and informal association, so we don't have a big electronic voting system set up. We just invite anybody who's interested to serve on the Bureau, please um, speak to me or any of the other current Bureau members. And they didn't know I was going to do this, but maybe they could stand up, the current Bureau members, so that you know who to approach. So we've got Ralph Döring there, Hans van Ausenbrugge, Eric Lindebo, Bertrand Le Gallic, and Raoul somewhere through there. <laughs> so we are, ah, hi Raoul. So we're very um, keen to have people interested to join the Bureau and take a role in steering how things go in uh, our association. Let us know if you want to nominate yourself or if you want to nominate somebody else. And then during the general meeting on Wednesday, we'll see um, if, how many nominated people there are for the seven posts in the Bureau, and we'll hold a ballot if necessary, um, if we've got more than one nominee for each post. Um, so now I'm very pleased to um, introduce former president of IAFI. Gosh, I'll soon have that title. Um, and one of the founding members of our association, Philip Rogers, who's going to share his... Oh, and Massimo Spagnolo. Ah, Massimo's first. You can see we're so well organized here. <laughs> Massimo will be first. Uh, some of our founding members, and I'm really looking forward to seeing their reflections on 25 years of our association. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you for being here. Uh, let me give you my warmest welcome in Salerno as uh, it has been uh, for the last 30 years. Perhaps most of you already know that uh, Salerno has been home to uh, fishery economists for these last 30 years. Uh, this is the fourth conference, for the fourth year after conference uh, that uh, it has been organized by uh, the Salerno uh, team. And uh, uh, I think this is uh, also the proof of a, a long-standing uh, in, uh, interest in developing the, uh, the profession. For many of you, this is just another occasion to revisit, to come back to Salerno and perhaps to discover, uh, if the weather will allow, <laughs> other places of these uh, nice uh, cities. 
some other, uh, perhaps uh, for some other, this is the first time you are here, so I think uh, that uh, both of you uh, deserve a, a warm welcome for this, uh, for being here. Now, uh, someone asked me, uh, how does it that uh, um, uh, for the last 30 years, uh, all the uh, activities, fishery economics activities have been organized by REPA in Salerno and outside, by the way. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, just a few words, just so if you were saying that uh, uh, why uh, it is Nisea today which is uh, uh, taking care of organizing the, the conference. Uh, as perhaps some of you already know, due to external unbelievable vicissitudes, in 2013, uh, IREPA has been compelled to suspend its activities. It's too long, but I mean, it just uh, seems a joke, but that's the reality. And uh, uh, what IREPA was doing before, like uh, being responsible for the national, uh, the production of national statistics in fisheries, like the technical assistance to the ministry, like developing a, 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 a research in fishery economics, had been to, uh, to stop. This means that uh, something like 90 people had to face a change. This means that the 23 people working in Salerno had a really uh, bad, uh, bad uh, times. So uh, Nisea was the first to start uh, uh, again and uh, uh, they, they, they've been able to, to, uh, to take over uh, what was the uh, IREPA activities before. There is no doubt that my younger colleagues will continue to keep up, to keep high the flag uh, of our 30 years of successes and contribution to the profession. And I'm sure that starting from the IREPA heritage, they will largely and proudly improve the quality and quantity of previous activities. This conference is already a successful proof of the new start. Well, this is, was due uh, just to explain to those which have been acquainted with IREPA for last years, for last 30 years, what has happened and what are we going, what we are we, uh, going now. Coming to the conference, I mean, coming to the uh, celebration, I will say a few words. Uh, before leaving the floor to Phil. Uh, if there is any meaning, I think, in celebrating a conference and calling back people, perhaps also a bit crippled as I am in this period, is to, to tell uh, that w how uh, we are today here, why we are today here, how does it come that we achieved uh, what we achieved today? So uh, I think it's uh, important to remind the new generations, generations which uh, have taken over in these last uh, years, what the affair was in the founders' thoughts in 1988-89. I'll be very short, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's only a few uh, reflections. Uh, in, uh, in, uh, in 89, when Jacques Weber started, the, 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 the started with the idea of uh, uh, putting together the uh, fisheries economists all over the European Union, uh, they were at start, at first start, huge discussion. Uh, those which are a bit older, uh, perhaps may participate in those discussions, but the core of the discussion was, should IREPA be an independent body, uh, academic body, uh, or should be involved more with the day-to-day -day, uh, uh, management, fisheries management? Some of us were uh, really, uh, remember that at those time, the academic side was much uh, stronger. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so the, the idea of independency, of the, the, the idea of having uh, a, an academic uh, association was very strong. But at the end of the day, the choice was, let's try to uh, make up uh, an association which will uh, say a word in management. Uh, the underlying and most robust idea was that uh, it was necessary the building of an influential association able to actively contribute to the construction of the European fishery policy. This was the, uh, the, 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 uh, the core business at the beginning. In other words, the idea was to play a role in what at that time was the growing European fisheries playing field. Just have in mind that in 89, in, those in that time, uh, DG fisheries was something totally different <laughs> from what it is now. 
it was just few people, very experienced, and uh, uh, being able to to manage uh, the the the, uh, uh, the activity. But also, implicitly, the idea was to try to limit the biologist's role by proposing different management paradigms, paradigms based on the economic approach. Uh, the idea was also to limit, in a way, the invasion of, the, of biologists, which was, uh, in a way, just taking all the places, possible places in the, within the, the, uh, the, uh, the directorate for fisheries, what it was called at that time, the general directorate for fisheries. Of course, we were all well aware that this was an ambitious target. Uh, moreover, the position in IAFE uh, were not always homogeneous, as I said. But at the, end, at the end of the day, the decision was taken, let's try to fight our small war and try to achieve our goals. So uh, we needed some strategy. Uh, we needed to, to, to find ways to, uh, to find out how to let the effort to be recognized uh, and to be considered in this uh, uh, very small world as it was fisheries in that time, those times. So, uh, we had the, the first step of this strategy, in, in, I'm telling, this, there, was, there is no document saying this, but I mean, this basically is what happened. So the first, the first step was, uh, let's start organizing top conferences. Uh, this was uh, something which started uh, just in, in Salerno, I think, in 92. Then uh, we continued in uh, uh, Brussels in 93. Uh, just to make an example, our, our idea was we have to bring on the European uh, floor uh, the most the hottest teams. So in Brussels, for instance, we had a, a very a viv, uh, very nice debate, vivid debate, uh, uh, where Parsifal Copes, John Sutinen, uh, Steve Cunningham as well, uh, were participated, and that was the first time we had a, 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 a serious, a huge debate on property rights in in Europe. I think very very little was done before. But uh, we had also in Brussels the possibility to have in our table uh, in, the, in the discussion, uh, we had the participation also of the general director of the fisheries at that time, which was not really uh, very common. So uh, this was something that uh, uh, allowed uh, the, the start of uh, this uh, EAFE, EAFE uh, start going around, and, uh, 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 and we kept on for a while. Then there was a second step. The second step was that uh, we need to, to let EAF recognize. So uh, we, I think we are talking about very, very lot of time, a, 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 long, a long time ago. So the second step was uh, to, be, uh, to have the EAF uh, recognized in the, in the fishery wars. So uh, uh, a, a lot of activities started. The workshops uh, on uh, hot teams uh, the, the, the bulletin, the AFE bulletin also started at time. And uh, uh, then we also started to have some promotional and uh, uh, marketing campaign. I think uh, uh, in just a while, uh, Philip will, deal, will, uh, will say much better than I do. But uh, I, I think that uh, also uh, producing the logo, the logo was, uh, was done in Salerno. Perhaps you don't know that, but it was, this was done in 80, in, in 91 in Salerno, and uh, it's still there. Then we started with the posters. Perhaps some of you still have these, uh, these uh, conference posters in their bureau, but, uh, but uh, these posters also play the role. Perhaps not, uh, not everybody can, can uh, catch the importance, but I mean, uh, uh, this was also very useful. Then we had a third step. The third step was we tried to have EAF recognized formally by the Commission. So uh, then a, a season of uh, talks, a season of talks uh, uh, with the Commission trying to have a, a protocol between EAF and the Commission start. Uh, let me say that uh, uh, this was a, a brilliant idea, but we did not uh, seriously uh, considered the attitude, um, the commission attitude. We had a lot of meetings with, at that time, Director Alain Rorek, with Mastracchio. I think Dominique Levier, you participated actively in this uh, discussion. And I think also it was uh, 
uh, uh, let's say, an heroic uh, attempt <laughs> to find out ways for the affair. But uh, at the end of the day, in this respect, all efforts were vain, and we had uh, to, to withdraw from our, <laughs> from our idea. Uh, of course, uh, we can, today we can say that that target was uh, a bit ambitious, but not, not a bit, was <laughs> really ambitious from zero to the top. Uh, was a bit uh, too much, of course. But uh, uh, nevertheless, I would invite you to think that the second best was achieved. I mean that in a, in a, in a very short time, meaning four years, uh, uh, IAFE did not exist, and then after four years, more, more or less all over Europe uh, knew, now I mean in the fishery sector, knew that there was this association which was doing so many things and it was also uh, sometimes disturbing. <laughs> In the annual general meeting held in Brussels in 93, uh, Jacques Weber said, and uh, he, uh, sorry, Jacques Weber hailed the progress made as being halfway to the achievement of the association aims already. So, I mean, in, uh, in, if you consider the period, it's not too bad uh, uh, for the, uh, these uh, past presidencies or for the past bureaus. Now, the one question remains in my mind. Uh, did, the, did, in, did, in following years, the AF and fishery economists all necessary steps to make the profession more actively involved in the decision-making process as biologists are? Because don't forget that while the economic side uh, was hardly participating in the decision-making process, uh, biologists instead are the, the, the base of the decision-making process. In some way, they are also the, uh, the, the, uh, very, very useful for the ad European administration. Uh, now, the, 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 uh, the question, I don't know if it is correct, but I don't know if it is still a question to be addressed today. I mean, change, the times uh, are changed. Uh, the, the, the fisheries is much wider uh, field than before, and uh, there is room for everybody. So uh, I would say that perhaps it is not even necessary to ask, but if from time to time someone think to uh, what has been done, what can be done in future, perhaps is not a very bad idea. I don't want to say that to discover what was done in uh, those times, but I mean, of course, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, an association is also to have a vision where we are going. Today, uh, I say the, the, uh, the setting is very much wider than before. Disciplines have increased. The environmental dimension has uh, characterized the last uh, years of activity. So there are, these are real challenges and they deserve, of course, uh, uh, a, a major attention, but overall they are an opportunity for fisheries economists. In fact, our network is today robust and a couple of generations have grown working together on EU research programs. Unlike the 90s, in addition to the academic world, a good number is well positioned in most EU committee committees national administration, their participation in the scientific, technical, economic, etc. committee on the interacts, especially in Northern Europe, is appreciated, is appreciated. So that their contribution to the sector is well recognized by both industry and administrations. In a word, the fishery economist role has gained respect and consideration we thought it should have deserved in, in those times. Certainly, looking behind, the feeling is that after the first 25 years, we can say that most of the goals have been achieved. Even if in a changing world, much has to be done. I am sure the association will continue to play its role and assist its associates to better achieve the building of fisheries in Europe through our sound economic analysis. Well, this is my personal wish, uh, and this is the best way, let me say, to honor Jacques Weber memory, and also to let those who started this adventure in 1989 to feel that their efforts were not useless. Let me now leave the floor to Philip, which I think uh, uh, will uh, explain much better than I did uh, uh, what AF uh, has been in, uh, in the past. Thank you. Thank you, Massimo. I've prepared just a, 
um, small presentation. When I was uh, asked if Massimo and I could uh, undertake this job of just looking at the history of the association, I thought it would be a good idea just to dig back into my records to see uh, really what I could find. Um, so we start off with the 1988 IFEC conference. It was at that uh, conference that Jacques Weber called together all the European fisheries economists and asked the question, would you like to have a European association? Of course, Jacques had done his homework beforehand, as you would have expected of him, um, and had undertaken a tour of the, the what, six, five it would have been, because of his own, of course, he didn't have to visit, um, of, of the um, fisheries economics institutions in Europe that employed three or more fisheries economists. And at that meeting in Esberg, it was agreed that we would go ahead. So we had inauguration, um, quite a grand inauguration with the assistance of the European Commission at the Borchette Centre in Brussels, complete with um, full interpretation in a very large room. Um, about 40 members attended, and we thought that we'd done extremely well with 40 members. Four papers were presented in the afternoon. And registration was uh, undertaken by Denny Bailly, um, who's not with us, I think, uh, this week, um, under the law in France, under the law of uh, 1907. So we are legal. <clears throat> the, aims, the aims that were set up, four aims, set up in the uh, original set of rules that were agreed at that meeting at the Borchette Centre, to promote cooperation, to assist dissemination of information, to do anything we thought sensible, and to serve as the channel of communication. And those are the functions that we've carried out uh, ever since. <laughs> You're struggling to hear me. Is that, is that better? Can you hear me now? I managed to find a photograph of the Lisbon 1990 conference, which shows the original bureau, the original gang of four. I'm still getting feedback. Um, shall I just stand up? Um, with uh, a very handsome Massimo. Uh, Hans Frost, who's not able to be with us uh, this week. That's better, is it? Yeah, and no feedback now. Hans Frost, who's not able to be here um, this week um, because his wife is uh, quite ill. Um, Jacques Faber, and then myself, uh, complete with hair. <laughs> Let's see if we're better here. Early developments. We had, I think it was in the rules. I, I haven't got an original set of the rules. And unfortunately, the... Um, Hmm? The, rules are on the, website. the rules are on the website, but they're the amended rules. They're, they're not the original set. Uh, unfortunately, the minute book has uh, gone AWOL, um, and we're not quite sure where it is, so um, I wasn't able to check. But we set up, in any case, in the beginning, um, what were called, very confusingly, commissions. They would have been better called working groups, I think, um, which explains what they were. Uh, I can't remember that. There were half a dozen of them, and I can't remember exactly what they uh, were covering. But they covered such things as capacity, and I, I know that there was one for bioeconomic modelling. Um, but they didn't really work uh, for the simple reason that it was very difficult for people to get funding to, to come to working groups to work um, and to explain why they might need to. And it was also difficult for people to um, come away from some of their ordinary day-to-day -day work to write papers for those which weren't particularly uh, important meetings as they appeared at that time. Uh, the second thing was the, the, the relations with the European Commission. We started having very, very good relations with the European Commission. Um, as I said, the, you know, the offer of the Borchette Centre to hold the inaugural meeting. But uh, things changed a little bit with changes of personnel at the, uh, at the Commission. 
and uh, they didn't go so well for a while after that. I tried to set up a fishery management advisory committee which was uh, designed to, to follow um, the original objective of, of Jacques Weber which had been to provide a channel of communication for economists between the fishing industry and the biologists, um, a, a channel of independent advice. But again, that failed. Um, but what did work was the promotional material uh, and logo that Massimo is responsible for commissioning. Um, we had um, our logo, which is up in the top left-hand corner there, Divine, designed by um, an Italian, needless to say, Gelsonimo d'Ambrosio from Senio Associati, um, which I think is based in Solano, is it? Yes. Um, but a, a, a very well-known uh, Italian design team. So not only did we have the logo, I don't know whether you can see, um, but you, I'll be wearing it during the week. We also had some little lapel badges designed. Um, for the members, and I believe there's a box somewhere with several hundred of these in. So if you want one, ask, and we'll try and find uh, where it is. Um, D'Ambrosio also designed uh, an iconic poster for the 1992 uh, AFA conference. I, it, it was sent round to the various institutes to publicise the, the conference, but I used to see the, the poster up. Um, simply as a work of art. For years afterwards, as I went round to various institutes in, in uh, Europe, it was a tremendous poster. I wish we had a copy, but I don't think we've got one, have we, um, and we'll, we'll try and find one and maybe let you have a copy on the um, website. Other things that we tried, the bulletin, well, 1989, 1990, if you stop and think about it, Email was only just beginning to get going. We decided to have an old-fashioned bulletin. Uh, again, it was difficult to get going um, because it was difficult for people to find time to write things. And it was really superseded by the development of the website. So the bulletin went by the wayside. But we now have the website and the mailing list. Successes, I have to say, survival. You know, when we started in the beginning, uh, we were not at all sure that there would be that many people. After all, as I said, you know, six institutes in Europe with three fisheries economists was, was the bedrock, um, with a few other people, individuals normally working in um, the universities. But we haven't just survived. We've got a membership of over 100 and a very healthy balance sheet. And you can't uh, imagine how pleased that makes me looking back 25 years to, <coughs> to see from when we started. Networking, um, ARFI has provided a tremendous networking um, system, and not just from our conferences, but from other occasions when we meet. Um, and there's a lot of research cooperation has followed the networking and uh, uh, the, the conferences. But the conference itself has, I think, been the, the star point, really, um, and that, again, <coughs> can largely go down to Massimo, who in the 1992 Salerno conference um, obtained a very significant amount of funding from um, institutions uh, locally, not least the Chamber of Commerce. You would know the others. Um, but which gave us the opportunity of holding a really um, three-star conference. <coughs> and it still is the friendliest conference that there is years of conference workshop venues. Of course, um, after Thessaloniki, the AFI decided to have a, a biennial conference rather than the annual conference. We had thought in the beginning that an annual conference was really very important, but that meant that every second year we clashed with the IFEC conference, which again made it difficult for people to, to write papers and find the funding to go. So, uh, in a biennial conference was introduced, but in the meantime, by and large, there's also been a, a, a special workshop put on about a particular topic, a one-day workshop. And here we are in Salerno in 2015. <coughs> but if you look at the conference map and the locations, you can see that we've 
done a pretty good job of visiting various places around Europe. Really, perhaps, and perhaps it indicates the fact that you know, we, we started, the, the, the logo has 12 stars on it. Um, there were 12 member states when we started. Since then, uh, the European community has expanded to become the European Union. Um, we decided not to add more stars because it was going to begin to look like the night sky rather than a, 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 a fisheries badge. Um, but we need to think a little bit more about membership and, and activity from the Baltic states and Poland and the Black Sea countries. And a list of those who've served on the Bureau. Again, rather an emphasis towards the older um, uh, member states. A to-do list? Well, Jacques's original vision of acting as an advisory group between the marine scientists and the industry. The trouble, I mean, the, when Jacques died about a year ago, the obituaries mentioned that he was a visionary. And the trouble with visionaries is that they can be 50 years ahead of their time. And in some ways, I think perhaps Jacques was in seeing something that needed to be done, but something that couldn't be achieved immediately. Um, Massimo has, has dealt really with, with the de deliberations that we had at the beginning as to, to just what we were going to be able to do. Um, one imagines that maybe when we have the, the 50 year celebration, and I shall be coming along to that, um, we'll be able to consider whether we've got to that position or not. Uh, the consideration, of course, is that fisheries are changing anyway now with 40% of uh, the fish by tonnage uh, that's produced being produced by aquaculture. We're looking at, at an industry that's changing really quite significantly. But note the contribution now that is made by fisheries economists to the STECF and its working groups. Um, economists are still heavily outnumbered on the STECF, which I think is rather unfortunate, uh, given that fishing is actually an economic activity. Um, but in the expert working groups, we have uh, a series of working groups during the year uh, where we're able to, to contribute and send stuff to the um, STECF for consideration. Probably uh, ARFI needs a higher profile, not amongst um, the Commission members or uh, among uh, uh, the fisheries economists, but I, I was thinking more perhaps in the media. Wouldn't it be nice if when some fisheries matters come up uh, in each member state, the media could go to somebody to, to get one of those sound bites, uh, a one sentence a statement in the news. Um, that just gave a, a, a fishery economics position. That's uh, a very much a personal hope. And perhaps also a recruiting drive in the, the newer member states. But the epilogue I leave to, to Massimo. When um, we were asked to, to do this um, presentation, I sent Massimo an email and I got uh, these words in a, a reply. I don't know whether you can all read them at the back, so I'll read it out. Your email brought me back to the beginning of the 90s. A heroic period, full of energy, expectations, achievements and failures sometimes. But overall, the start of important friendships which have gone on throughout the years. And I can emphasise that because I can go from corner to corner of this room and almost every row down here and there is somebody I would consider a friend or an old friend. Um, what's marvellous is that there are also a lot of faces I don't know, and I look forward to meeting all of you too uh, during the progress of the conference.